The Bombardier C-Series, now known as the A220, took flight for the first time on September 16th, 2013. That was over 4,300 days ago, and in that time frame, neither Boeing nor Airbus have launched a new clean sheet jet, let alone fly one. These two aviation titans have instead focused on updating their old designs, which has made the industry feel a little bit stale. It seems like the days of innovation have been replaced by simple iteration. But that drought is poised to end. Boeing's been readying the tech it needs to build its long overdue 797. And just a few months ago, Airbus teased its own plans for a clean sheet narrowbody. This imminent showdown between the 797 and A360 has had aviation fans buzzing. But as much as I hate to be a Debbie Downer here, I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit. While Boeing absolutely should build a 737 replacement, I think it's a mistake for Airbus to do the same. In other words, Airbus should not build a clean sheet A320 successor. At least, not yet. Let me explain. Now, as we'll talk about in a moment, Airbus wants to put some crazy tech into the A360 platform. And in order to keep that proprietary information away from prying eyes, companies like Airbus implement strict procedures and systems to help keep their trade secrets secure. But few of us have that kind of protection in our own lives. In fact, there are hundreds of data brokers out there that are actively selling your personal info like name, address, phone number, and email. But thanks to Delete Me, today's sponsor, you can better safeguard your most sensitive information. Delete Me is a privacy service that monitors hundreds of these shady data brokers on your behalf, and then actually gets your data removed. Within days of starting to use it, I got a full report that showed me where exactly my data was found and how Delete Me got it taken down. And Delete Me is a proactive solution constantly monitoring to ensure that your data doesn't pop back up. If you want to safeguard your sensitive information, much like Boeing and Airbus, then it's definitely worth checking out Delete Me. And if you go to joindeleteme.com slash Kobe Explains and use the code Kobe Explains at checkout, you'll get 20% off. Thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back to it. First, Let's talk about what Airbus has revealed about the A360 so far. The company gave a sneak peek of the plane at this year's Airbus Summit. And while details were admittedly sparse, we did get an early look at some of the plane's most interesting features. Notably, Airbus wants to include radical new engines and wings. On the power plant side of things, Airbus is closely studying an open fan design, along with partner CFM. This type of engine architecture is completely novel, and it could deliver a bypass ratio of 70 to 1, compared to the roughly 12 to 1 ratio of today's most advanced turbofans. That would lead to a huge boost in efficiency, up to 25% by some estimates. Airbus also wants to include longer, thinner wings with folding tips. Much like the 777X, this would give the aircraft a larger span to improve lift, while still being able to fit into standard airport gates. And with its up next demonstrator, Airbus is also testing aeroelastic hinges that would allow the wing to dynamically change shape in flight. Now, if Airbus can implement these technologies alongside a new composite fuselage and other systems, I think it would make for a pretty compelling aircraft. But here's the thing. The industry doesn't really need a radical new platform right now. What it needs above all else is consistency. Airlines today are really frustrated with Boeing, Airbus, and their suppliers because they can't build planes fast enough. Even though the duo builds roughly 100 single aisle jets per month, it's still not enough to meet demand. And it's not like reaching this level of production was easy. Both have spent decades fine-tuning assembly to achieve this level of output. It's expected that this mismatch between supply and demand won't resolve until the 2030s. Only then will 737 and A320 production meet equilibrium with the market. 
but it's also right around this time that their replacements, the A360 and 797, will be hitting the market. And that transition from last gen to next gen is gonna be a challenge. If the mature supply chains that build today's jets can't keep up, imagine just how bad delays will be once these entirely new programs kick off. And if both Boeing and Airbus introduce new jets at the same time, it would set the stage for a protracted supply crunch. Now look, Boeing doesn't really have a choice here. The 737 family has pretty clearly run its course, and it's just untenable to revamp it again. But Airbus does have a choice, as the A320 platform still has plenty of life in it. Its fly-by-wire controls feel just as modern today as they did 30 years ago and its high stance means that it can easily handle bigger, more efficient engines. In other words, the A320 architecture is more than capable of handling another refresh. Now, it is true that this next-generation A320, which we'll call the A320X, would come with some performance penalties. It's unlikely to match the efficiency of a clean sheet 797. But that honestly doesn't matter because one, it would be way cheaper to develop, and two, it would use the same production process that Airbus has spent decades refining. These factors would make the A320X plenty compelling. It could be priced more competitively than the 797, and it could be built with greater regularity. This could help Airbus stifle 797 momentum in its early days. All of this sounds great, but there is one problem that I'm sure some of you are thinking about. The 797 probably wouldn't be an exact match with the 737 and A320. Hey folks, from the flight deck here. We've reached our cruising altitude on this video, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that fasten seatbelt sign. You're free to move about the cabin, but I recommend keeping those like and subscribe buttons engaged while you're in your seat. Enjoy the ride and let us know if there's anything we can do for you down in the comments. So what exactly do I mean when I say that the 797 won't be a direct replacement for today's narrow bodies? Well, like we've talked about before, the 797 really needs to replace both the 737 and the slightly larger 757. So it'll be upsized, with its smallest variant, the size of an A320, its middle variant, the size of an A321, and its biggest variant being even larger. If Airbus built a competing A320X based on its three existing NEO members, it would be left exposed at the top of the market. This is a big problem because airlines are moving away from smaller narrow bodies and towards bigger ones. But here's the thing, shifting the A320X lineup up market wouldn't be hard at all. In fact, it should be easy for Airbus to build a stretched A322. Now, overstretching an airframe is a major risk. It's what ultimately doomed the 737 MAX. You'd think that Airbus would want to avoid a similar pitfall, but the scale here is completely different. For some context, the 737 MAX 10 is nearly 60% longer than the original 737. It's definitely pushing the limits. Meanwhile, if we took the A321 and stretched it by 23 feet, which is the difference between it and the A320, it would make this new A322 only about 35% longer than the original A320. That is a much more reasonable leap. Meanwhile, Airbus could lean on the A220 to cover the smaller end of the market that the A320X would vacate. The A220-300 has already proved itself to be a capable A319 replacement and Airbus says that it will eventually build an A220-500, a plane that could directly replace the A320 itself. By rejiggering its products like this, Airbus could cover the entire narrowbody spectrum, from small regional jets to mid-sized workhorses, using just two well-established and economical aircraft families. And all of this could be done while minimizing supply chain disruption. All in all, this just seems like a smarter approach. Of course, that then raises an entirely different question. If Airbus doesn't build a new narrow body, what should it build next? What might the A360 look like? Well, I think the answer is pretty self-explanatory. It should be a wide body. When you look around Airbus's commercial lineup today, 
its twin IO portfolio does have a few gaps. While the A350 dominates the big twin category, the A380 and A330 leave a bit to be desired. And much to the dismay of Emirates, who desperately wants an A380 successor, I think it's far more prudent for Airbus to focus on the A330 instead. Now, the A330 family was launched back in the 80s, and while its latest iteration, the A330neo, is a really solid aircraft, it is going up against some really tough competition, the Boeing 787. The Dreamliner is arguably the most advanced commercial jet ever built, and it's become an absolute lifeline for Boeing during its darkest years, outselling the Neo by a count of roughly 5 to 1. Now, a major reason why the Dreamliner has been so popular is for its ability to unlock new long-haul missions. In this jet, Boeing paired modest size with excellent efficiency, which helped airlines expand into new markets that otherwise couldn't be served profitably. The Neo just isn't quite as adept at this. Like we've talked about before, its real strength lies in its short to medium haul versatility. Building a clean sheet A330 successor would help Airbus close the gap with the 787. And the timing for it couldn't be any better. The very first Dreamliners entered service in 2011, making them roughly 14 years old. And in about a decade, that first batch of jets will be nearing retirement. If Airbus starts development now, the A360 could enter the market right as early 787 operators are looking for replacements. Airbus actually did something really similar with the A350. It timed its entry into service with the retirement of early 777-200s. And as a result, Airbus stole away key 777 customers, like Singapore, Cathay Pacific, and Asiana. So if you already know that this approach works, and the timing is right, why not chase the opportunity? At the end of the day, I just don't think it's the best course of action for Airbus to pour all of their resources into a clean sheet narrow body. The 797 will have teething issues. It'll probably be expensive to buy and difficult to build. Because of that, Airbus should offer a contrasting approach. By refining the A320 platform and shifting it up market, Airbus can sell airlines on a more predictable option. Sure, it won't be as efficient, but it'll be cheaper and more readily available. Then, Airbus would have the resources available to focus on a real area of need, going after the Dreamliner. And if Airbus can play its cards right and execute on this vision, it could find itself with a commercial lineup that has virtually no weaknesses from top to bottom. So what do you guys think? Is Airbus making a mistake by focusing on a clean sheet narrow body, or is it the right call? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.